Hey guys, welcome back. So, we are doing another review where I get ready because this is the only kind of review I want to do from now on. This video might be a complete failure because I have hella hay fever today and hay fever plus makeup are a match made in hell. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about Concrete Rose. I read this book a little while ago. This is Angie Thomas's third book, I think. This book is the prequel to The Hate You Give. Holy shit, I love The Hate You Give so much. It's such a good book. It's so well written. The characters, so well written. The atmosphere, the storytelling. Like, it's just everything you want. Would highly, highly recommend going and reading that if you haven't already. There is a movie adaptation. From Memory is also really good as well. It's just, you know, what it's just a hit it's just a hit franchise so this is a prequel this follows the main character of the hate you gives father when he's 17 17 year old maverick carter which if you've read the hate you give you would remember as being star's dad follows him during a period in his life where he's involved with gang selling drugs when he finds out that he's a father and that he's also going to have a, a second child on the way very shortly after the book kind of goes into how he deals with parenthood being thrown upon him so fast and basically just him trying to find a way to support his family here's my first thoughts on the book my first opinion like the first little quarter of the book i wasn't really vibing the book and i'll tell you why because you know what my issue with the book was precisely this i've discovered something new about myself as a reader guys and that is absolutely fuck protagonists that have kids i did not want to hear about your kid that sounds so mean no but okay let me explain okay babies and kids are cute and everything like good on you and everything your kid is really cute love that love playing with kids love you know, babies, whatever. But I do not want to have to take care of a child. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't even want to read a book about it, okay? And this book, the beginning was just really... This baby was very demanding of the attention, which is quite accurate to real life. But oh my god, I was like, listen here, like, Maverick's the one that fucking had this kid. Like, why am I suffering the consequences of it? Like, why am I the one that has to suffer reading about all this crying and screaming and shitting? I'm not the one who signed up to raise this kid. Like, what the fuck? That's the main character's problem. Problem? Me calling children a problem is definitely gonna get some dislikes on the video, but that's not my problem to deal with. Why am I being punished? <laughs> Everyone with a kid is just disliking this video. So yeah, I've discovered this about myself. I don't want to read about children. I don't want to read about taking care of children. I don't, it's just something that I do not enjoy. And I will never read a book about a main character that has to look after a child ever again. Anyway, it was like the first 25 to 30% of the book was just this baby crying and him having to take care of the kid. And so I was really like, oh no. But then the book shifted after that and it became a mega vibe. Like a lot more started happening. It became much more interesting. The story starts off with Maverick, right? He, I think he's like after school, he's gonna go to the doctor with his mom to find out if his best friend's baby is actually his scandal i know like some real jerry springer you are the father shit you know and that's exactly what happened the test results came back basically what happened is like he has this girlfriend called lisa they had a breakup that lasted like two weeks or something and in the meantime he went and slept with his friends like was she a side hoe at the time or no not a side hoe just like he was just like messing around with her they weren't like in a relationship or anything um so then maverick <laughs> slept with her she got pregnant, had the baby, said it was like her, his friend's baby. But then they went and got this DNA test after school. And then as soon as, um, as soon as it came back that Maverick was the father, like they picked up the kid and then the mom just, the mom, the mom is also like 17, right? The girl is called Aisha, the baby's mom, okay? Aisha and her mom are just like, oh, you're the father. And, and Maverick's like trying to be a good guy. He's like, you know what? I'm going to help you raise this baby. I'm not going to be a dirtbag and leave. Then they're like, amazing. Sounds good to me. And they just like literally dip. <laughs> they're like, oh, someone who wants to take care of the baby. Nice. She just bounces. See you later. You want to look after the kid? Sounds good to me. Leaves him in his little carry-on case. And she's like, your problem now. Very me. Like a very me thing to do. And you know what? I'm not even going to blame Aisha for that. Because you know what, bitch? Like, I would do the same thing. No, that's terrible. But I would do it. What is this review? This review is just me exposing how much I don't want a child. How much I'm not supposed to be a mother. I need to stop. Back to the story. Back to the story. Back to the story. Oh, shit. I didn't do my... I didn't do my contour, I just put all that powder on my face. I didn't even contour. Okay, potato vibes. A potato makeup tutorial. Ruined everything by doing that. You can't put cream contour over powder. 
we'll use this. Is that karma because I said I don't like children? I'm sorry. I'm actually not sorry. I stand by everything I said and I'd say it again. Oh, okay. Um, speaking of Maverick getting with a chick two weeks after they broke up, the parts where Maverick really annoyed me, there were some times where he was being a little bit of a hypocrite, which is very 17-year-old boy behavior. Well, very 17-year-old behavior in general, but when he really tried to go off on Lisa for hanging out with a new guy at her school, like two to three weeks after they broke up, and he's like, oh, wow, I see how it is, blah, 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 like you get with this new guy like two weeks after we break up and it's like motherfucker you literally did the same thing mate and you got the chick pregnant and wound up with a kid like you're in no position extremely rich coming out of his mouth you're in no position to say shit lisa can live her life lisa can do whatever the fuck she wants okay if she wants to do a beyonce and bounce to the next dick like she can do that and i support her Everything for Lisa. We love Lisa. We really do. Lisa supremacy over here. But Lisa set him straight, so it's all good. It's not something in the book that just, like, was never addressed. Like, it was addressed. Um, I loved seeing all of the character cameos as teenagers. Like, um, from all the people that we see in The Hate You Give. Seeing all the teenagers as newborns, like Khalil, Seven, and, like, when Aisha was pregnant with her next baby, which ends up being Kenya, which was really cool. And then seeing all of the parents as teenagers, and then seeing all the older people, like the, um, oh my god, what is the name of the guy who runs the store he's like the hairdresser and he's a little bit crazy in the hate you give anyway him as a younger man it was so nice to see. it was so cool it was really like we love a prequel we really do i also just love okay i've not done any of my did we save the look or did we just put the final nail in the coffin i can't tell okay um i also just love the fact that a book like this exists um a black teenager who comes from a hard area who's swept up into a gang who's having children while he's still in high school um and portrays him as an actual human being and not just like a statistic or like someone that made a bad decision and deserves to like pay the price because you know what he's just a regular kid he made some stupid choices and now he is he's found himself kind of trapped in this life that he's not happy with and he's doing the best he can with the cards that he's been dealt and you know what's really respectable the fact that he's not trying to just run away from his problems he tries to stay and fight his way through and carve out a better life for himself and his family and he wants to step up to the plate and take responsibility i think it's also really important a book like this showing that a lot of times young men are not involved with gangs because they want to it's because they're forced to it's not something that they want to do for fun or because they want to like be cool or whatever it's like something that they it's like for survival it's more because they have to because they have no other options it's he's got a family to think about he has a regular job but the wages are just absolutely not enough to support a family and like to pay for everything that a baby needs babies are so expensive another reason why i don't like babies like i'm sorry but that money is mine motherfucker like i could never be a parent jesus anyway yeah it's more about survival like we see and i love that this book really like it makes it very black and white this book you can see this is why i think people should read this book because i think it's very easy to judge when you're not in that person's shoes but you take this boy for example he's a teenager the money that he's earning is piss because teenagers do not get paid very well um, and working like part-time in a convenience store or wherever he was working and you can only work part-time because otherwise you have to drop out of school and then if you drop out of school so that you can work more so that you can feed your child people are going to judge you for dropping out of school oh well you're never going to do anything like you're never going to get anywhere in life if you drop out of school so it's like what do you want them to do you really see how he's kind of backed into this corner and he's pretty much forced to go back to the gang even though he wants to leave he wants to live a clean life for the sake of his son and he it's so hard he runs back to drug dealing out of desperation and it's so easy to judge if you're not in that person's position but i really believe that i think there are levels that most people never think they would stoop to that they would stoop to if they had a hungry child and no other way to support them me waving this around like <laughs> i think it's so important for people who are living like really cushy middle middle class lives would probably never be faced with this situation ever to read a book like this because I think the people who are so far removed from a situation like this are the ones who have the most shit to say about it and who are the most judgmental. I just like the fact that this book kind of touches on the reality of this stereotype. Black men in Maverick's situation are failures when it's really the system that's failed them. If more resources were made available to boys like Maverick, it can really make a world of difference. Like that's the one thing that you see in this book. He really had nowhere to turn to. Okay, we're not, what we're not gonna do is talk about 
this powder contour that I've done today because it was done out of desperation. I kind of don't want to go into super spoilery things. I didn't really write that many notes, like spoilery notes, um, and it's been a while now, so it's hard for me to remember like exact, exact details. Okay, should I just put on some highlight just as a lol because this look has just jumped off a cliff. 90% of that went into my eye. Um, in comparison, I haven't read Angie Thomas's second book on the come up. I've only read The Hate You Give. I am really interested in reading On The Come Up. At some point, I would like to read that. But I think between the two, between Concrete Rose and The Hate You Give, I liked The Hate You Give more. I don't know, I think I just liked Star's character a little bit more. I know there's a common question with these books about whether or not you should read The Hate You Give before you read Concrete Rose, or if you're able to read them in either order. And I think you could honestly read them in either order. I think the only real benefit that you get from reading them um, in publication order, so like The Hate You Give first and then reading Concrete Rose, is that when you read Concrete Rose, you'll, you have more backstory of course, like you have more of an understanding of what happens. Um, it will feel more like cameos and like it'll feel like everything's an easter egg when you read the book i think it would be more fun to read the hate you give first because then when you when you read concrete rose everything feels like a cool easter egg i would give i think i gave this book four stars just because i didn't love it as much as the hate you give which i gave five stars to would highly recommend it it really is such a fun read so they are all my thoughts on concrete rose the prequel to the hate you give i hope you enjoyed watching i hope you enjoyed watching me get ready you know what it didn't come out that bad at first i was like absolute like abort mission we need to delete this immediately and burn the evidence pretend it never happened but you know what maybe i would leave the house with this again thanks for watching i will see you soon